fighted with a Liberty Bowl. I'm a typical Memphian, and the Memphis reaction is the direct benefits and the indirect benefits are out of this world. We love the name Liberty Bowl. We happen to have many... The Liberty Bowl stands alone. Flowers, fruits, and vegetables. But only one postseason classic represents the qualities upon which our country was founded. Freedom, justice, and liberty. The greatest week of sports in Memphis history begins in the beautiful Mid-South Coliseum. Track teams from Villanova, Memphis State, Tennessee, and Arkansas soar to 10 new meet records. world record will be tied 5.1 seconds from now. In his first collegiate competition, Memphis State freshman Jerry Tinker ties the recognized mark in the 50-yard dash. Barney Ewell set the 5.1 record in 1941. This is Olympic high jump champion Dick Fosbury, one of the two gold medalists to appear at the second annual Liberty Bowl track meet. Watch the famous Fosbury flop. The other Olympic champion flies a bit higher than Fosbury. He is the holder of the world's indoor record at 17 seconds and a quarter, the holder of the world's record at 17 feet 9 inches. Ladies and gentlemen, Seagram's exhibition, the Liberty Bowl crowns a track champion. Liberty Bowl Week is a pleasant visit to a friendly community. A new modern airport greets the incoming visitor. He soon learns that Memphis on the Mississippi is celebrating its 150th birthday in 1969. But building to the future with the modern architecture of the downtown area. Nestled in this business complex is a place to relax. Memphis is where W.C. Handy gave birth to the blues. Not far from Beale Street is Graceland, home of the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. Presley's spacious surroundings is just one of the many comfortable homes that makes Memphis a community of pleasant living. Adding to the cultural value of the area are 19 colleges and universities, including Memphis State University.
This Liberty Bowl 1969, Judith Ann Rost welcomes Alabama to Memphis. Coach Bear Bryant is greeted by Curtis Person, Jr. By midweek, four college basketball teams have battled down to a championship game. Memphis State in white, Tulsa in the dark uniform. The taller Tulsa Five wins the crown with sharp shooting and the brute strength of 6'10 sophomore center, Dana Lewis. The final is 82 to 72, and the most valuable player award is won by Tulsa's Dana Lewis. Liberty Bowl week is more than the rugged competition found in athletic events. It's a high-spirited holiday of fun and friendship. Many gala affairs attract a warm-hearted visitor, including the Variety Club Dinner. This Freedom's Foundation Luncheon, attended by Ambrose Bud Dudley, Executive Director of the Liberty Bowl. Dr. Kenneth D. Wells, President of Freedom's Foundation, and Mr. William Walton, President of Holiday Inns. More than 1,200 attend this special luncheon, including Liberty Bowl President John Hull Dobbs on the left and Mayor Henry Loeb. Colorado coach Eddie Crowder chats with Hall of Fame football coach Bud Wilkinson. And ABC TV sportscaster Chris Schenkel enjoys the company of Miss Liberty Bowl. Later that evening, the Skyway Room of the Sheraton Peabody Hotel is the scene of a black tie dinner. This is the highlight event of the night before the 11th annual Liberty Bowl. On Saturday morning, a pre-game brunch spotlights Harold Red Grange, who will receive a special award from Chevrolet, naming him the college football centennial team. And the opposing coaches talk strategy. Well, first of all, I think University of Colorado is a well-balanced team. But we, we are actually are not. We're a passing football team. So uh, first thing we have to do is try to stop their running game, which no one has done. Otherwise, we won't get the ball often enough. Scott Hunter, the Alabama quarterback, is unquestionably uh, one of the best passers in the country. And we feel unquestionably we've got to stop him, number one. And I think to stop him, the first item is to put on a good rush. But now the warm-ups are over. The main event is here. Memphis Modern Sports Complex is the scene. The weather is perfect. The players are ready. Your seat is waiting. Program! 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 A Liberty Bowl record crowd enjoys the balmy 62 degree temperature. Alabama versus Colorado, and for Bama coach Bear Bryant, it's his 11th consecutive bowl appearance. meeting ever between Alabama and Colorado. The Buffaloes receiving have a 7-3 record, while the Tide is 6-4. 
Colorado is a running team. With quarterback Jim Bratton, number 10, working the triple option offense with tailback Bob Anderson, number 11. The quarterback has three choices. First, he can give or fake to the fullback. He can then keep the ball. If his run is stopped, he can pitch to the tailback. Three separate problems for the defense. The versatile offense keeps Alabama off balance. Quarterback Bratton adds to Bama's problems with his running ability. Eight plays in the drive, all on the ground to the Bama 13. Fullback Ward Walsh finds the opening that gives Colorado a quick seven to nothing lead. Defensively, the Buffaloes must rush Scott Hunter, number 12. A quarterback Bear Bryant calls probably the best passer I've ever had. The Tide's offense stalls. They must return possession to Colorado. And the Buffalo offense is again ready to roll. Anderson's 49-yard journey is the game's longest run from scrimmage. Another look shows the fake to the fullback fooled the tied defense, allowing Anderson room to roam. Dave Haney adds three points to the Buffalo's advantage. As he barely misses six. After one period, Colorado leads 10 to nothing, and the Buffaloes unveil their aerial game. But the passes are only to taunt the tie. Colorado gained twice as many yards on the ground as in the air in 1969, and on this sunny December afternoon, the Buffaloes stick to their strength. Jim Bratton lunges to the Bama four. Here's that option play again. Anderson takes the pitch for the score. The Buffaloes leap ahead 17 to nothing. Alabama, a passing team in 1969, now must employ its strength to catch up. And Dave Bailey, number 84, is the Tide's all-time leading receiver. <laughs> the interference penalty breathes new life into the Bama attack. Quarterback Scott Hunter spots a big hole in the defense. Thirty one yards to pay dirt. A repeat of the play shows how quickly Hunter charges past the tackle, number sixty, into an open area. Then puts a move on the safety, number forty three. And wins the foot race to the end zone. Hunter's surprising run puts Alabama on the board, trailing 17 to 7. Go, Bama, go! 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 Go,
Minutes later, Hunter and Bailey pair up again to spark the tide. Three yards into Colorado territory. Hunter is beginning to find some holes in the Buffalo secondary. From the sixth, George Raniger sweeps in untouched, and Alabama trails by only four, 17 to 13. After the kickoff, Colorado again takes control with its punishing running game. When Bratton pitches to Anderson, the defense must play for either a pass or a run. Number 11 quarterback the Buffs until their third game this season. He makes the halfback pass run option a dangerous Colorado scoring threat. Anderson's bullish scramble sets up the Buffalo on the Tide 15, where Ward Walsh pops over left guard. It's now 24 to 13, Colorado. But this is to be a high scoring Saturday. Hunter's passing can keep Alabama always within striking distance. Hunter throws into the end zone. and draws an interference penalty against Colorado. This is where the Buffaloes need a goal line stand. Come on, Andy, baby, let's go, Andy! Come on, big Buffs, come on! Come on, line, come on, 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 come But Johnny Musso's two-yard touchdown dive brings the visitors from Dixie to within five. Bama trails 24 to 19. <laughs> Alabama, however, is jolted on the following kickoff. <laughs> Steve Engel gallops 91 yards to stun the record crowd of more than 50,000. At the break, Colorado commands a 31 to 19 lead. Before these two teams continue to battle, the fans are entertained by another Liberty Bowl halftime spectacular.
Opening the second half, trailing by 12 points, Alabama assistant coach John David Crow is forced to alter the Tide's passing strategy. Starting quarterback Scott Hunter and his top receiver, Dave Bailey, both suffered crippling injuries late in the second period. You run straight down the field, get away from the net, and try Let's to run go, straight Neb. down and just look over the outside shoulder. <laughs> Neb Hayden, number 11, is the new thrower. And Griff Langston, a new receiver, is open for 55 yards. Let's take another look at the game's longest pass play. The quick bomb cuts into Colorado's advantage. Jim Bratton tries to grab it back on one throw. But Steve Williams of Alabama is there to wipe out the threat. Hayden strikes quickly with a bullet to halfback Johnny Musso. Then Hayden swings Musso down and out. Finds his halfback all alone for the 10-yard touchdown. For the first time in the game, Alabama holds the lead. Buffalo coach Eddie Crowder tells his quarterback that the team has to regain the momentum. Colorado cannot panic. They must stick to the game plan. The key is Bob Anderson, number 11. Anderson is the only Big 8 back in history to gain more than 5,000 career yards. Anderson carries eight times in this vital fourth quarter drive. He will finish the game with a Liberty Bowl record 254 yards rushing. The six-foot senior, already drafted by Houston as a baseball catcher, takes it in. Take it in, Buzz. Take it in. Come on, Come on. Colorado bounces back on top, 38 to 33. And when Alabama retaliates, it turns into the game's most controversial play. The official's first rule, a tied fumble and award possession to Colorado. The decision brings out the bear. Bryant explains it as a whoopee pass and that it should be ruled incomplete and not a fumble. Let's take another look at that controversial play. Is it a forward or lateral pass? The officials change their decision, ruling an incomplete pass, allowing Bama to retain the ball, but tack on a penalty to the Tide for its coach entering the playing field. The decision so riles the Buffaloes that they charge through and KO Hayden for a safety. It's now 40 to 33, Colorado, and the Buffaloes celebrate their success. shot for Alabama. 
but they can't contain a Buffalo front four that outweighs them nearly 20 pounds per man. The tide is turned. At the Bama three, Bob Anderson scores his third touchdown of a record shattering performance. It's the last time number 11 will run for Colorado as the school will retire Anderson's number. Colorado wins the 11th annual Liberty Bowl 47 to 33, ending the most exciting game in the bowl's history. Saturday evening, the awards are presented climaxing the greatest week of sports in Memphis history. The Outstanding Offensive Back Award from the Humble Oil and Refining Company, presented by Lee Tierney to Colorado's Bob Anderson, who earns yet another award. We'd like to call as our most valuable player, Bob Anderson of Colorado. This has to be the greatest athletic moment of my life, and I just want to thank you all once again. Congratulations. William J. Hightower, Chevrolet Motor Division, presents the winning team trophy to Colorado's proud coach, Eddie Crowder. Memphis, it's a pleasure to present to you and a great Colorado team the trophy as the winning team and the 11th annual Liberty Bowl here in Memphis. Congratulations. And thank you. Liberty Bowl 1969 was brought to you by Humble Oil and Refining Company.